I was in Afghanistan taking part in the largest, most dangerous and complex operation that the Afghan National Army, the ANA, had ever conducted. It involved over a thousand Brits and a thousand ANA and Afghan police in the Yachal Valley, in the Goresh area of Helmand. Can we carry on, yeah? I was with the British Army's two rifles advisor patrol to the ANA. The main role of the Brits now is to advise the ANA on how to be an army. And this 27 square kilometer box of battle space is the nexus of Taliban activity in Helmand. dominate the ground and take all of the compounds, these are farming areas where families and animals are kept, detain and question all men of, of war fighting age to make sure they weren't members of, of the Taliban. And as we started to advance, there would be IEDs that are going off all around us um, with that constant threat of stepping on one yourself. These are basically filled plastic containers full of homemade explosive. As the ANA bomb disposal officer detonated the IED in front of us, his British advisor made an assessment that it was 40 kilograms of high explosive, easy. The lads told me the Afghan disposal officer assigned to us wouldn't lie down to work on the device because his legs still hurt from taking a blast as he walked away from an IED the day before. When the Taliban did return fire onto the Afghan National Army, it was actually a relief as you took cover because their firepower, it was almost like an uncontrolled firepower demonstration where they would just let rip and there would be literally 70 or 80 weapons just pounding into a compound and immediately the Taliban fire would stop, which would mean one or two things, they're dead or they're running for cover. I spent time with Lieutenant Colonel Bill Wright, the commanding officer of two rifles, who told me the ANA have come a long way. He told me that we have to let the ANA fight the insurgency the Afghan way and to resist a Western style of fighting that the ANA will not be able to continue once NATO combat troops leave in less than 18 months. Wright's role is to shadow the ANA leader, Brigadier Sharon Shah. Wright told me it's by letting the ANA own the battle space and knowing that being an advisor is about personal relationships, just like any other business. For example, Wright calls Shirin Shah, Sir, and treats him the same as any other general. Besides, Shirin Shah has over 30 years of continuous warfighting experience, and that commands huge respect. The 48-year-old, well, his age varies depending on who you talk to, is married with six children. He is an extremely large and imposing man, when we shook hands, mine was the size of a baby's compared to his. However, it was obviously enjoyed being in the company of soldiers and clearly liked the fact that I was ex-Special Air Service. I asked him what was his main concern about the future of the ANA, and he took a bold sweep from one of the jars that was never more than an arm's reach away. His answer was very clear, that the ANA will not get the support they need in the future. Shirin Shah doesn't want us, NATO, to leave too early. During the operation in the Yachtel Valley, I met US Army Major Jerry Redfield from Montana. He is one of the independent ISAF assessment team. I wanted to know if Redfield was optimistic about the future of the ANA. After all, Afghanistan was about to depend on them. And he was very clear, they can hold Hellman, but only if we, NATO, give them the military support, as well as good governance in Kabul. I also asked him how the Brits were doing compared to the rest of the country, which was being supported by US advisory groups. He said that this bag, the Two Rifles Advisory Group, what it has done with the ANA is 18 months ahead of anything else in country, and that Redfield and his team were going to recommend this for the United States to adopt for their post-2014 planning. Redfield told me that he was confident that at some time in the future, he will be able to bring his wife to Afghanistan for a holiday. During my trip to Two Rifles Bag in Afghanistan, the overriding message and feeling that I came away with was that if the international community do not provide continued support to Afghanistan, then all the military effort over the last decade, the loss of young men and women's life and limbs, and the blood that has been physically spilt into the Helmand dust will simply be squandered and a generation's hard work wasted.